Bellator MMA making its debut in Boise, Idaho. Great crowd, jam-packing Central Elite Arena. It began with the heavyweights. There's a glimmer in all of their eyes now the title is vacant. That's right, Chase Gormley versus Joey Beltran. Chase Gormley, the much bigger fighter, but fighting at range. Waiting for Joey Beltran to come to him, which he did, but it was too little too late as he loses a split decision. A narrow and controversial decision. Little did we know what was to come. One thing we had no idea was coming, was not only a loss for the legend Marlos Kunin, Alexis Dufresne taking a short notice fight became just the second ever to submit her, Misha Tate being the other. Dufresne started out with the takedown. Marlos Kunin, a beautiful sweep, but once she was on top, a momentary mistake. Look at it here, walking up to the triangle, converted to a crank, and then back to the triangle for the finish. Look at it here, she tries to sneak out, armbar, and that is it, attack in the first round. A stunned Marlos Kunin could not believe what she had just been through. By the time the night was over, we would all feel that way in a lot of different ways. Now, Dan Charles and Augusto Sakai, this was a fight which had some questionable judging as well, but Augusto Sakai did what he does and stayed calm. Yeah, stayed on the outside. This might have been the turning point of the fight. Two cup shots, two kicks. That cost him a point in the opening round. Now, remember that because as the fight went on, Dan Charles never really found his offense, got a takedown, but staying mostly on the outside where he ate kicks, mostly to the legs, some to the body. Sakai moving his feet the entire time. Thought he took the last two rounds. The judges disagreed, called it a draw. A majority draw because of the point deduction for the two cup shots from Augusto Sakai. We moved on to the featherweights, a critical contender fight between Georgie Karahanyan and Pat Curran. In the end, it was one moment that decided this. That's right, in the first round, the always dangerous Pat Curran found his opening right here, a left hook right on the jaw. Georgie Karahanyan, great chin, great heart, he managed to stay in the fight, but Pat Curran all over him in the second round. In round number three, Karahanyan finished strong, but it was once again too little, too late. Pat Curran moves near the top of the list, looking for Daniel Strauss in a third shot to become featherweight world champion. For 21 years, Melvin Manoff has chased the world title. For 21 years, he has kept it off the judges' cards, and now we know why. Rafael Carvalho versus Melvin Manoff. I have to say, the worst decision I have ever seen. Factor in the fact that it was a title fight, Melvin Manoff offensive in spurts. Rafael Carvalho not offensive at all. Occasionally finding a takedown, but it was Melvin Manoff landing the effective kicks, having punches and flurries. Rafael Carvalho never able to keep Melvin Manoff off the, on the ground, ended strong on top. The judges gave the fight to the champ, Rafael Carvalho, much the bepuzzlement of everyone else who saw the fight. For the latest Bellator news and information, it's bellator.com. June 17th, Bellator's Bantamweight title is on the line when Galvo battles Dantas. Then June 24th, are you ready for Dynamite 2? Rampage returns. Plus, I want that belt back. Chandler versus Pitbull. Oh, yeah, and the debut of heavyweight Matt Mitrione. Bellator MMA, Friday, June 17th. Then Dynamite 2, June 24th on Spike.